With so many great enduro mountain bikes on the market today, it's hard to know which one to choose. I recently had a chance to test ride five high-end enduro bikes back to back in a 24 hour period, and here's what I learned. First enduro bike I tested was the Santa Cruz Nomad. This bike was the third most popular enduro bike of 2017 according to Singletrack's readers, and with 170 millimeters of travel front and rear, it was the biggest bike in my test. Now this should go without saying, but the Nomad was a blast on the descents, every one of which left me wanting more. The Nomad is a true hot rod on the trail, stable at speed, in the air, and through the corners. I never felt like the suspension platform was working against me on any of the climbs, though as the specs clearly show, the Nomad is not designed to climb as well as some of the other bikes I tested. The good news is I felt like the front wheel tracked well enough, even through steep ups, and the lightweight X01 build didn't weigh me down. I could definitely see myself riding the Nomad on my own local trails, which are really similar to the ones in my test, without feeling like I was pushing around too much bike. Next I tested the Intense Tracer. Intense just bumped up the travel on the Tracer to 165mm in the rear and increased the bike's reach. Singletrack's readers recently chose the Tracer among the best and most innovative bikes of the year. I was struck by how nimble the Tracer felt and how confidently the bike cornered. While the Nomad rode like a brutish muscle car, the Tracer proved itself to be a sporty import, capable of weaving in and out of trees and gliding over the trail at high speeds. Climbing steep grades was a joy on the Intense Tracer thanks in part to the bike's generous seat tube angle. The suspension platform felt firm as well, though the flip side of this is it didn't feel quite as supple on the descents as some of the other bikes in the test. For my final bike on day one, I tested the Mondraker Dune RR. This will sound weird to some people, but I kind of enjoy climbing on the bike. For that reason, I tend to prefer bikes that climb really well. The Mondraker Dune did not let me down here, offering a solid and efficient pedaling platform that wasn't bouncy at all. Not only that, the front wheel tracks surprisingly well on the climbs, never feeling wandery or out of control. On the flip side, I also enjoyed the thrill of a fast descent and the adrenaline that's associated with launching a bike into the air. Thanks to its long chainstays and wheelbase, the Dune was super stable on high speed descents. Flip side to that is the Dune ended up toward the back of the pack in terms of cornering capabilities, which wasn't helped by its tallish bottom bracket. The next bike I tested was the Marin Wolf Ridge, a bike that has many riders intrigued due to its unique suspension design. In fact, Singletrack's readers voted the Wolf Ridge the most innovative mountain bike of 2017. So naturally, I was curious to see how it would perform. I started my test ride with a smooth descent and found the Wolf Ridge tracked the trail extremely well while providing plenty of cushion for landing. Through rooty pedaling sections, the bike felt a little firmer compared to other bikes I tested, though not to the level of feeling harsh. The firm platform did come in handy on the climbs where the bike was responsive and quick, even with the larger 29er wheels. On paper, the slack seat tube angle should have made pedaling less comfortable, but in practice, I found myself able to rocket up short, steep climbs that seemed to sneak up at the last moment. The Wolf Ridge cornered as well as any of the others in my test, despite the slightly longer chain stays and big wheels. Finally, I tested the Santa Cruz Bronson, and it ended up being my second favorite bike overall. Honestly, I was pretty sure I would hate this bike, but Singletrack's readers are stoked on it, so I had to see what the hype was about. I found the Bronson cornered great and was among the easiest bikes to handle. The short chain stays really help here, as does the low bottom bracket. Santa Cruz seems to wring a lot of performance out of just 150 millimeters of travel in the Bronson. And I'm not just talking about soaking up the big hits. Small bump compliance felt great and I found the overall suspension to feel more responsive and plush than most of the bikes in this test. Finally, climbing on the Bronson was a breeze with a surprisingly efficient platform even on the steepest out of the saddle grunts. The front wheel never wandered far, unlike my experience with the Santa Cruz Tallboy just last year on this very same trail. Overall, I get why single tracks readers and mountain bikers in general are flocking to the Santa Cruz Bronson. To get more details about the bikes mentioned in this test, click the link on the right side of the video. Also be sure to subscribe to the Singletracks YouTube channel to be notified about our latest videos.